to our second daily update from California. Today, the focus of our reportage will be concentrated photovoltaics and Siemens' 950 million dollar in-kind grant. But first, we would like to present you three leading worldwide companies working in CPV direction. Could you let us know more about your CPV modules? Yes, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Um, Aminex is a leading designer and manufacturer of concentrated photovoltaic CPV solar systems. They're essentially utility scale solar systems that are, um, as you can see, they're erected on a pedestal very similar to wind. It's made up of seven uh, mega modules and essentially the sunlight concentrates onto these very small and highly efficient multi-junction solar cells. So these systems are actually the world's most efficient solar technology from a cell perspective. It's a 40% cell efficiency, 31% module efficiency, and 29% system efficiency. So we use uh, Fresnel lenses to focus the direct sunlight onto very small triple junction solar cells. And the solar cell is just mounted on a, on a heat spreader. So we have a, a very straightforward and simple design for the, the, the module, just consisting of the lens and the cell itself. This uh, is what is called concentrator photovoltaics, or CPV. Uh, it is a technology whereby you use an optical system, in our case a reflective optical system, to collect the sunlight. It reflects to a secondary mirror and concentrates the sun 650 times onto a very small high efficiency solar cell. And when you do this, you're able to get a lot larger amount of power out of a smaller amount of uh, photovoltaic material, which results in much less expensive solar energy. And what are the major challenges and opportunities for CPV? Yes, CPV um, has really recognized significant growth. We've continued to build momentum. A lot more CPV projects are actually in the ground, and there's also a solid pipeline for future projects. Um, in terms of opportunities, there's really a confluence of factors that are driving the adoption of CPV technology. In addition to the low LCOE, um, uh, CPV systems use no water in power production, which is very important in the sunny and dry southwest states in other areas of the world where uh, CPV systems are best suited. So no water in power production. They also use land better. Um, CPV produces more energy per acre than any other solar technology. And also it doesn't require any special grading. So animals can roam underneath because it is pedestal mounted and plants um, can coexist with the solar systems. So again, highest uh, energy density with the lowest environmental impact. I mean, again, from a, an efficiency standpoint, being the world's most efficient is, is really um, a strong attribute and competitive advantage versus the alternate solar technologies. In terms of deployment, it deploys much like wind very quickly. In fact, post-pedestal installation, these um, systems can be installed at about a half a megawatt a, uh, a day. It's a very rapid installation. It's also a very scalable technology. So we can do projects in around two megawatts and up. So we can scale to larger deployment sizes as well. And actually, CPV is very well positioned from a competitive pricing standpoint. At Aminex, we're um, very diligently focused on tracking competitive prices. We have a very well-defined plan to continue to improve efficiencies. So there's a lot of headroom there from a cell and system perspective. And as well, we have a very solid plan to continue to drive out costs. In fact, um, recently, Green Tech Media published a CPV market report. And in there, um, you can see the projections of uh, CPV technology, particularly Aminex, being uh, the lowest uh, going forward. So yes, definitely competitive. How do you see the market for CPV in the coming years? And what is your company's growth strategy? Well, CPV is, this is really the year it has come of age. It's been thought of as a lab experiment for a long time. First commercial deployment started in 2010, and, and as a company today, we have six megawatts of product in the ground. Uh, we're expecting to see the CPV industry as a whole grow probably to about 50 megawatts this year and uh, closer to 200 plus megawatts next year. So it's going to be on a very steep growth path as more and more companies that do CPV reach commercial status. You know, our growth strategy is, is really threefold. We're focused very much on the U.S. utility market where you can get large volume deployments. We have a strategy around distributed generation or customer side of the meter for industrial and consumer projects. And then we're investing a certain amount of effort in developing new third world markets where having electricity alone is, is considered a luxury. 
And in your opinion, what are the opportunities for CPV in the U.S. markets and especially in the California? Well, that, that's the California. That's a unique place for CPV because we have we have both. We have on one hand the the, the, the huge energy demand in the in the in the load centers along the coast, and on the other hand we have the deserts right behind the the the, the load centers. So only 100 200 miles away from from the load centers. So that's a great opportunity for CPV to place power plants, large power plants, in an area where we have a, a lot of sun, plenty of sun, where we have uh, um, hot temperatures, which is exactly an environment where CPV shows the best performance. Here at Intersol North America, Siemens announced an in-kind grant at a commercial value of an astonishing $950 million. This grant will support research and development efforts within the solar industry and clean technologies. Could you let us know more about the $950 million in-kind grant that you have just announced? Um, yes. Um, you know, Siemens has been um, in a educational relationship with UCLA now for over 30 years. One of the ways that we invest in that relationship is with in-kind grants uh, to offer technologies, in this case software, that will be used for solar research and uh, the advancement of the solar industry. So this is 1,200 licenses of our product lifecycle management software that will be used by some 4,000 students at UCLA to further ideas and um, technology for, for Siemens and for uh, the solar industry. Sounds good, thank you. Can you add a little bit? Yes, the, the software that we're providing to UCLA is, that, as uh, Rick has mentioned, the Siemens PLM software technologies. They consist of computer-aided design, uh, computer-aided manufacturing, uh, de manufacturing automation, and data management technologies. These technologies are used throughout the world by any company that de develops and maintains products. Um, and the important thing about this, this grant is that it's going to expose the students in a university environment to these technologies and prepare our future engineers and leaders for the workplace. Can you please tell us what you plan to do with the in-kind grant and who is it targeted to? Um, <clears throat> the faculty and students are going to be the ultimate benefit uh, beneficiaries of this software. Um, this is going to give UCLA a really strong competitive advantage um, when we are competing for uh, research grants from the federal government and, and other potential sources. This grant is not only going to allow us to train students and be part of the educational curriculum, but it's going to be able to use as value in attracting other grant funding. And so I think there are multiple ways in which it's going to benefit the university. And the long-term strategic value of this is really almost incalculable right now. That's all for today. We are finishing our reportage with some shorts from SolarFest networking event, which Solar PVTV team attended thanks to a kind invitation from InterSolar team.